Hi everyone. What we're working on today is a 411G. This is a very similar machine to the 401, the uh, 500, um, various other machines like that made by Singer. They're known as Slantomatics and they're also considered some of the best machines that Singer ever made. Now one of the problems that you might run into that might make you think, yeah, yeah, right, is uh, you may find that the stitch selector is stuck on it. You may find that the hand wheel doesn't turn. Um, most of this uh, is usually related. So what we're going to look at today is how some of these parts function together and what we can do to unstick them because they they often are just are just stuck because of a lack of maintenance really. And a little bit of patience and some triflow oil will usually take care of any problem that you can come up with with these machines. So let's start over by the needle bar. At first I must apologize, I don't have a tripod that works very well with this camera which is also my phone. So until I find a good tripod solution, please bear with a little bit of shakiness. Okay, so here we are over here at the needle bar. Now the way that the needle bar works, I'm gonna actually back up just a smidge here. The way that the needle bar works in order to do a zigzag is it swings. This is why they were referred to as swing needles. See, if you watch down at the bottom there, you'll see that the needle is swinging back and forth. Back and forth. And to do that, this pivot has to happen. So one of the places, or two of the places, I guess, that tend to get bound up with these machines with lack of, of uh, maintenance is here, right up at the top. Right up at the top here. And this is a grease spot here, or an oil spot here. So you can put oil in here and it will kind of work its way through. So this is the pivot and this is the pivot. I often, with a machine that's really reluctant, will actually give it a drop of oil here, a drop of oil here, and a drop of oil here, just to give it a little bit of a extra push and encouragement to do it into going where it should go. And then what I'll do, if, if there's any movement at all, is I'll just give it a little bit of a little bit of a push no more than it really really wants to do because we never want to force a sewing machine and then I'll just kind of I'll let it do this to work it in just a little bit now you'll notice that there are a few things that are also moving as we do this back here there's a piece here that's moving it's kind of a fork and then we've also got let's see if we can get at it here with a flashlight maybe Back here, back here is a sort of piston. It's also part of this whole um, swing needle on the machine. You can see it pushing in and out a little bit. This is going to be easier to see on your own machine if you've uh, if you've got one of these, which is probably why you're watching this video to begin with, because I'm having a heck of a time getting light in there for you. Anyways, so there's basically four parts here. There's this part here. There's this here, this here, and then these guys here. So this part here is part of making that that pivot work or that uh, that swing work, as are these pieces. Now, this piece back here is the part that actually tells the needle to swing back and forth. When we push this back and forth, we can see that move because we're actually actuating all of this in, in reverse. And as we do that, we can also see stuff is moving all the way back to the cam. And this is exactly how a cam machine works. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the rest of this now. In these machines, and I'm hoping there's going to be a little bit of light here for you, in these machines there's also another piston of sorts. And I still can't get a great light on. Oh, there's a little bit of light for you. Down here, if we go ahead and actuate, I don't have enough hands. If we go ahead and we actuate this, come on. Let me see if I can get you some light. If we actuate it, there you go. You can see it just on the right side of that flapper. You can see a piston, just a little bit of it and completely in the dark, of course. There it is, right there. That piston right down at the bottom is usually the biggest problem. 
get a little bit of oil in there and just keep working this back and forth the way that I'm showing you. Then the other places that you want to work, you'll notice that flapper. That flapper has several pivot points on it as well. When we push on this, you can see how much stuff moves. We give it a drop of oil everywhere that we see movement, everywhere we see metal rubbing on metal or metal pivoting at, at metal. The other thing that we want to do is we want to pay attention to these collars. You'll notice there's a pillar and a collar. This is exactly how your stitch selectors work. What happens with these stitch selectors is we pull out or we push in depending on which one we're pulling or we're, we're adjusting. We pull out and what happens is this little blade down here clears not the collar but it does clear the pillar. By clearing that pillar we can slide up and we can slide down to adjust the stitch uh, that we choose. Now in order for all of this to work we need a couple of things to be working correctly. First these can't be stuck together. <laughs> Second there's a bunch of linkage here. You're gonna see there's uh, a joint here and there's a joint actually down here below the collar. Let's just see if we can get it to, there you go, that pivots around. We need to make sure that those are free moving. If they're not free moving, then they can't elongate and get shorter as we turn these up and down. If they can't do that, they're effectively stuck. So there are three main parts in getting these stitch selectors to work. You have your front pillars and collars and their linkages. You have, uh, in addition to that, you also have the back ones. If you look at the back ones here, they're virtually identical. The biggest difference being is in order to actuate all of this, we're pushing that top button in as opposed to pulling it outward. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna address both of these in exactly the same way. Your second part that you have to adjust, uh, address is your flapper. And you've got both ends of the flapper to, to address here. You've got this side, you have to make sure everything's working, including that piston down at the bottom. Then you also have to come all the way over here, make sure everything's working over here. And at, at the very end, you have to make sure that your swing needle is actually able to swing. I did have a machine uh, last year sometime that had been in a house fire. You may have seen it on my blog. The machine had been in a, in a house fire. The whole machine was completely frozen solid. Um, there were basically three things that needed to be addressed. This whole system that I discussed here, and that took um, cu probably a couple of hours to get going finally for the, for the triflow to finally soak in and, and do its job. This portion here actually took overnight to work, um, but when I woke up in the morning, it actually snapped back and forth just like this one does. The, uh, that machine also had been completely frozen, so that if you tried to turn the hand wheel, nothing turned. And then uh, part of the reason for that was actually that the motor, which is in here, was actually um, just a little bit seized with junk. So uh, again, actually a couple of drops, and I do mean only a couple of drops of tri-flow right on top on the motor bearing was enough to actually soak in there and free it up. Um, this is also a fix for if the motor is howling, sometimes this will help it. There's actually a bearing right at the top of this motor and they can be changed. Um, I do know people like Jenny over at So Classic do carry them, but uh, I've never actually had to change one. I've had some people say that they put motor oil in the top, just a couple of drops of it. Um, I've used TriFlow, I've never had a problem. And they just, they free up so fast, it's unbelievable. With that machine, actually, the only other problem that I had was the elevator plate, believe it or not. It was so uh, seized solid that we actually ended up having to get a little forceful with it. And we ended up uh, using um, a punch and a ball peen hammer, actually, to, uh, or not a ball peen hammer, sorry, a rubber hammer to actually get it loosened. And that was the last part. But by the time we were done with that machine, uh, over the space of less than 24 hours, including the time that it took me to clean it and uh, put it back together, it was actually one of the best running machines that we had, just from a little bit of TLC. So anyways, I hope this helps you out, and um, thanks for reading the blog, and uh, let me know how you guys make out with this, alright? Thanks a lot!